So we've just got back to our Riyadh after our really long day trip to Volubilis and Meknes. The tour ended up being about 10 hours long and had a lot of like just little extra stops, viewpoints. We got to see how all of the tiles are made and it's ceramic, right? Yes. Yeah, it's yeah. ceramic, which was incredible. But we didn't really get to talk to you much when we were in Meknes. We ended up getting an incredible tour guide named Muhammad. He was just so passionate and knowledgeable about history. He was incredibly thorough and like entertaining. His English was great. He was friendly and just it he turned out to be so worth it. He explains everything so much better than we ever could. But I feel like there are a few gaps that we do need to fill in because I think we missed like recording them or something. Uh, so I think it's probably best just to provide maybe a little bit of extra context about like Meknes and how it came to be. So um, it's the sixth largest city in Morocco currently. And at one point it was the capital. Yeah. And the reason it came about becoming the capital was in the 17th century, the king who was based in Fez passed on. And then the throne then got passed on to his brother in the Sultan, um, and his name was Malay Ishmael. Because he was very conscious of the fact that he wanted to maintain control of his empire, there were a lot of enemies that were really seeking to take his lands from them, which at the time was actually quite an extensive empire, uh, which took up a lot of Western Africa. As well as the Berber people, too. Exactly. Then because of that, then basically he created this gigantic world city for the sake of maintaining the water that was coming from the Middle Atlas Mountains. Also 12,000 horses to make sure that he maintained a good army stock. And speaking of stocks, then also maintaining a really huge set of granaries for storage of food. <laughs> divided in four quarters. The Jewish quarter may be the unique city in Morocco in which we have two Jewish quarters, the old Mellah and the new Mellah. But when you hear Mellah, it means a Jewish quarter. And we have, in Meknes, we have a big community. It's like, uh, in the past, it was more than 5,000 families. Okay? And most of them now, they immigrate to to the big city of Tudis, to the metropole, like Casablanca, like Tangier, you know, most of them, they practice business. That's why they travel or to, they immigrate to the other cities. And you find some, both of them, or most of them, they immigrate also to Israel, to Canada, to United States, okay? That's why. But most of them also, there is a houses here. They get, they get houses at home in Meknes. But in the summer, they come in here, or in the holiday, they come in to open the house, then they are in peace. Morocco yeah. or in the city. So the, the Jewish quarter is from this part. In front of us we have the old Medina. So the old Medina in Meknes is like the Medina in old Morocco. But just the Sultan Mule Ismail in the golden age when he, he surrounded the city by walls, behind the first wall he made the old Medina, behind the second one he made the military city, then behind this one he made the imperial city. Then the heart of the imperial city is the mausoleum of Mule Ismail, the one, the one that we want to see after. Yes. Okay? Yeah. area is for the artisans okay normally our old medina is divided, divided in 14 quarters in each quarter there is five important elements bakery hammam school for children mosque and fountain mm -hmm. those are the five important elements Tiberbarine, 
is the first uh, first quarter in Medina is writing there. Derb means Kaya. Okay? Derb, Sky, Tiberbarin. Derb means street, Sky means fountain, Tiberbarin, the first population in Medina. No, no, it depends on the material you're using in the construction. Yeah. You find walls, for example, it's a little bit thick, more than three meters. That's why always in summer it's cold, but also in the winter it's a little bit hot, in the middle of the house. Yeah. We were then taken to the local cooperative where we were shown a variety of goods. We were given a demonstration of how they add silver threading to the pottery. We were also shown some textiles that were all various colors and each of the colors represents a different Moroccan city. On our way home from Meknes, we were taken to a place called Art d'Argil, excuse my accent, and they are a business that operates close to Fez. They do pottery and mosaic pieces. They are custom made and we got to see some examples of gorgeous fountains, tables and chairs that they ship all around the world. We are really lucky to be shown how they make these pieces in a step-by-step -step process.
Sit, sit in the middle. The watch up. Yeah. Dip your hands in the water. Good, that's good. Dip them up. More. Good. That's okay. Put on the top and those fingers in the middle. Those in the middle. No, no. Keep the ram and those fingers. Good. But don't press on that. Keep the the clay slipping between your hands. Don't don't press. You know what I mean? Slipping between your hands. Mm -hmm. so to feel it slipping. Yes. And then you push only with two fingers in the middle. The outside fingers just to keep. Yes, take off the fingers now. Alright, so make your hand like ball. Yes. She's good, huh? Yes. She can stay with you. <laughs> we, we teach her and she will be peace work. There you go. <laughs> we, peace, we pay her for none of peace beginning the day. More peace is more money. <laughs> Change position now. Do like he does. No, take off your hand. Yes. But you have to press the, you have to touch the clay. Touch the clay, please. Yes. Now all you have yes. Hey, don't touch hand, he's here, he's has them. They've got to be plates. <laughs> Okay. Good. Okay. That's good. Okay. Now, string. Take the string well with the right hand. Don't use left hand. Just take the string. Be careful with the door. Take it well. The turn around and the cat itself. Take off. Look at me. Pick it. And show him. And tell him bye bye. I'm staying here. <laughs> wow. The inside, Look at that. the inside. The inside. The inside of the dish. Yeah, yeah. No? Do you see it? Right. You have to see it. There we go. Just like that. Ah. Good. You'll be a craftsman, yeah. She's still with us? <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> not today. Not no, today. Not today. <laughs> not today. You see, not today. You'd have your put both hands on his face. No, come on. <laughs> Follow him. You're going to show you the fence so you can wash your hand. Okay. And we cut them with a the sharp hammer. Mm -hmm. Then, as you see, we fit them all together. But you have to be upside down. Talk to, to uh, stars. The Solomon star. Eight point of store. So here we get eight, 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 and another eight. So when you finish from assembling the pieces, frame round and conquer it or hourglass. It has to be white. That's also white. Oh my gosh, amazing. The pieces we see up there, yeah. they start with templates. Those ones you put them upside down on the top, they drew on the top, and the first one cut the rough shape, the second one took the pieces and bevel them. Uh, that the first time, that the second step. First step, second step. That will be. transparent and shiny mm. and the colors come through and we do like this size or that. Purple cobalt, change blue. Gray copper oxide, iron oxide, change red, chrome oxide, change orange. owner of the Riyadh surprised us and told us that it's called family night and that means that we get dinner for free. So we went and spent the time socializing with the other guests at the Riyadh and eating traditional Moroccan food which was delicious 
It was literally a table full of food, a real feast. I think there were like carrots and zucchini and tomatoes and like flatbreads of some kind. There were two different ones. There was like some kind of white bean thing. There was some lentils. We had a soup. Then there was shabakia. There was actually too much food for all of us who were there. It was so much fun. Incredible. A real surprise and treat. So the dinner that we actually had bought, which were like these um, sandwiches that someone on our walking tour in Fez recommended to us yesterday, we've now saved them for lunch tomorrow, which I'm kind of a little bit nervous about because they're warm. So like them being cold, I'm worried they're not going to be as good as she told us they were. But, you know, free food we had to indulge tonight. Tomorrow is going to be our last day in Fez because we have um, a big travel day planned because we're going to be heading all the way down to Marrakesh. We had a look at the website and it basically is going to take us the best part of about six and a half hours to get there, which is going to be nice because actually the train journey that we took from Casablanca to get here was amazing and the train services here are really good. It will be a nice journey, but it's going to be a long one. So maybe not too much blogging tomorrow, but we'll be sure to update you on our progress and we'll be back with a bang on our first official day in Marrakesh. But in the meantime, take care. And keep smiling.